Late last week, the city of Idaho Falls on Friday put up lights on the big Christmas tree by Mm -hmm. the water tower in the Japanese Friendship (laughs) Garden. I'm like, okay. I think most people call it a pine tree. That's a sign. Yes. (laughs) I would call it a Christmas tree, especially now. That's fair. That's and fair. In fact, here while we're talking about it, here's a shot of the guys, the bros. Mm-hmm. There were three of them. Brissa Phoenix. One on the ground, two in the cherry picker. Mm-hmm. Just putting up the lights. Yeah. Big star on top already. They're, they've, they've started decorating the Japanese Friendship Garden as well. So I felt it was appropriate to begin the Christmas season since we ended with a, I wouldn't say an argument, but a spirited debate <laughs> last week. I thought it'd be apropos to have the Christmas tree up, but I did want to make a compromise. So we got some fall leaf (laughs) inserts yeah, and stuck them in there. (laughs) Which I think is nice. And it does. It matches your orange and yellow fall dress just perfectly. Yeah. So um, I got an email notification today and (laughs) it was saying that my package had been delivered from Unique Vintage and... um, I didn't remember ordering a package from Unique Vintage. (laughs) And so I opened the email because I was like, what? I thought it was a scam or something. Uh, And then I saw the order and I was like, oh, yeah, that was me. (laughs) You know, like I remember looking at my account and being like, man, where my where's all my money gone? (laughs) And then I'll like go through the um, the purchases because I'm like, okay, clearly like someone got to my card or like spent some money because I did have that happen once. I think I know where this is going. But no, it's all me. <laughs> you, you've seen the meme, uh, be your own secret Santa with alcohol and Ambien. <laughs> yeah. I actually, I knew a guy and I don't think he drank, but uh, he actually bought tickets to a show. He lives here in Idaho Falls. He bought tickets to a show in Denver. Oh, no. No airfare, no hotel. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> but he, he bought concert tickets to a show, you know. Did he go? I think he ended up, yeah, also. <laughs> he made it happen. <laughs> hey, you know what? Honestly, sometimes your subconscious self does things that your conscious self does really appreciate. He'd wake up some mornings with like 500 new songs <laughs> in iTunes. Oh, no. <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff. Man, and they were expensive, yeah. too. Oh, my gosh. That's like. I mean, I, I think it, <laughs> I think he probably bought albums, but. Still. Still. still I mean, like. 500 songs, that's at least... Okay, let's see here. There's 20 songs an album on average. Yeah, maybe 10, 15. 10 to 20, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's like 50 albums, and they're each like 20 bucks each. I mean, that's a lot. <laughs> now, you remember when we went to the vet uh, for Rango's Broken Wiener Yeah, <laughs> that uh, they had a Christmas tree up already, but it was decorated yes. like Halloween. And I know... I, so it's always a friend of a friend. I know I have a friend of a friend who ha- leaves the Christmas tree up year round and decorates it seasonally. Really? Yeah. I have heard of a Halloween trees. Yeah. Like a lot of people will do black pine tree or well, yeah, black Christmas trees as Halloween trees. Um, I've never heard of someone leaving a leaving it up all year and changing it every yeah. season. That seems excessive. I, I think <laughs> when you get older, time flies faster. Well, yeah, because it's proportionally a smaller percentage of your life. Exactly. So if you don't get around to putting it away until April, <laughs> and then you think, oh, another six months, it's going back up anyway. Which is so funny to think of, too, because realistically, it's so much less work to just put it away instead of changing the decorations right. on it every season. Right. Like, it takes so little time to take the decorations off and put it in. Like, once you have the decorations off, putting it in the box is like, what, six seconds? Have you seen the TikTok tree this year? And it's, I don't know, it's it's one of those spendy ones from Home Depot. And I'm, I'm waiting for the technology to get a little more affordable because I'm not spending a thousand bucks on a tree. No. But I want one of those ones with the... Um, Oh, the remotes? The lights controlled by the an app. Oh, uh-huh. And you can, you know, make it spin around with rainbow colors mm-hmm. and all sorts of crazy stuff. And and now they've got special uh, flashing LEDs that kind of look like soft but quick fairy lights. Oh, like fun. Like lightning bugs. Oh, if you've been, oh, If you've cute. ever been east of Kansas, you know. Mm-hmm. And, or I, I hear we sometimes have lightning bugs in Idaho, like around Lava Hot Springs area. Really? Really? I would love to see that. Uh, that's super cool. Yeah. I haven't seen lightning bugs since I was like seven, and I visited my aunt in Connecticut, okay. and I would love to see them again. That sounds really cool. Yeah. 
Yeah. I, again, lived in Milwaukee for three years, mm -hmm. and that was just one of my highlights. Just yeah. walking out the front door and seeing, because we are right now, they have a lot of weird kind of protected, small little misshapen segments of land that are protected water lands or protected marshlands. Oh. And and so, yeah, and with that humidity there, uh -huh. the, the lightning bugs just love it. But That's cool. I guess we don't get too many of them west of Kansas. Just no, And I think really. it's a humidity and, at least in our case, a warmth thing. Nowadays, though, if I did see any... I, there's no way I wouldn't think of that song by Owl City, Fireflies. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love that one. It's a good one. And then, do you know that guy went like gospel after that? You know, that doesn't surprise me too much. I know he was like a, he was kind of a Christian band to begin with. Okay. I And I didn't know that. I just liked his pop stuff. And then I yeah. heard, um, so when I, I wore a lot of hats at my last gig right. on the radio and you know, not only would I program music for the hard rock stage, I, one minute I'd be programming Five Finger Death Punch. <laughs> and then the next moment was uh, a thing the called Mormon Tabernacle Sounds Choir. of Sunday, yeah, <laughs> yeah. with Motab. And uh, <laughs> Owl City does this great version of In Christ Alone. And I know I'm going to sound like a good little uh, Christian choir boy here when I say <laughs> that. But uh, yeah, those hymns, man, they, they still get me. I get that. You still get me. <laughs> you know, when I was in high school, I loved the band Reliant K. Yeah. I don't know if you're familiar with them. Now, th I believe they're a Christian band. They are. M back in my day, it was Striper. Oh. They were a Christian rock band, <laughs> and they wore like black and yellow, so they looked like wasps. I don't know. <laughs> Funny. Okay. Hmm. But yeah, yeah, I was. I, I really loved their one song, uh, Marilyn Manson. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And, and what was of, the message of that song? Um, well, the chorus went something along the lines of, Marilyn Manson ate my girlfriend, he consumed her, and now she believes in sin. Wow, okay. Yeah, that's probably wrong. <laughs> so when someone Google fact checks me, I'm going to look dumb, but it was something like that, and I was like... <laughs> I was so into it. I was like, yeah, Marilyn Manson's a bad dude. And yeah. now I'm like, mm, he is, but for different reasons. <laughs> I've been programmed to believe since my before my prefrontal cortex was formed. And <laughs> did I say that out loud? I thought I just thought that. We've fallen back to some people hate hate it when it gets dark at 4.30. Um, yeah. Or like five around here. So I'm Ida, one of them. <laughs> Idaho Falls, I actually, you know, growing up here, um, I didn't quite appreciate the fact that Idaho Falls is almost exactly in the middle of the mountain time zone. Uh-huh. But as you can imagine, since there are three, four, let's see, Pacific, Mountain, Central, Eastern. Okay. Since there are four time zones in the continental United States, mm -hmm. there are plenty of people who live on, say, the east end of a time zone. Yeah. Which is like... So if you think about it, if we're in the middle of a time zone, we enjoy about the middle of the one hour period difference mm -hmm. between, say, Central and Pacific. So if you live on the east end of a time zone- The sun's actually in the middle at noon. You're right. Yeah. But if you live on the east end of a time zone, you get, I mean, like New York or, mm -hmm. say, Milwaukee, it gets dark at like 4.30. Oh, that's so early. And that's the sun also so comes up in the summer like at 4.30. <sighs> So th there's one thing. If you've been like, give me a reason to appreciate Idaho Falls, Idaho. There's one. Yeah. Yeah. We don't we don't experience any of the extremes, mm -hmm. say, on the east end or a west end of a time yeah. zone. <laughs> That's nice. Although, okay, can we talk about how dumb daylight savings yes. is? I hate daylight savings. Yes. I hate it so much. Except obliterate it. Except when we fall back, then I love it. Right. <laughs> I actually, I knew a guy who- I just want to do that until we're nocturnal. <laughs> right. You just want to keep falling back. Yeah. Yeah. I knew a guy who was just so bitter and angry, literally, mm -hmm. um, in during daylight saving time because he felt like something had been taken away from him. He said he was groggy all summer long mm. and couldn't wait to fall back. And he felt like he regained that thing that was taken from him. And I thought- Man, what a what a thing that's so out of your control to be right. so upset about for such a 
what, a majority of the year, right? Yeah. I yeah. Think. Well, half the year. <laughs> yeah, half the yeah. year. So damn near a majority. <laughs> right. It's probably like 51%. But I still have an attitude about it. And it's been scientifically proven that A, we don't need it anymore. And B, mm-hmm. it really does mess with you. Yeah. Your circadian yeah, more- rhythm and all the... Well, I was going to say that guy must have like the most finely tuned circadian rhythm to ever exist. Yes. Maybe he's just a sensitive soul. I guess he's so. Really in tune. Yeah. Which is sort of a funny concept too, you know, because like it's so weird to think about your body knowing the time when you don't like actually know the time. Right. You know, uh, it's sort of like um, how they say that there are actually six senses because there's taste, touch, sight, scent, smell, and also movement. Your We're- body can feel when you're being moved. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like when you're on a plane or a bus. Exactly. Even if technically you don't like feel it, feel it, like your body can tell that you're moving. Yeah. You know? And I guess in like in that same uh, vein, there's also time. You know, people tend to have a sense of time. Not me, but other people. <laughs> I and, and maybe just because my life was run by the clock for so many years, mm-hmm. I can I can wake up from, say... Let's let's say I had a nap after lunch, a little siesta. Mm-hmm. I I can without having looked at the clock beforehand, I can wake up and go, it's about 3:30. Look at my clock and and I'll be within 10 minutes either way. Yeah, I'm not like that at all. I have so I have such bad time blindness and it's why I'm always late to everything. Right? And it's got to drive people nuts and it's I Carly get standard it. time. <laughs> it is. Well, it's because I never know what time it is. Like I can kind of guess sometimes if I have something to reference. Like if I looked at the clock about an hour ago, I can usually estimate it's about an hour after. You know, but realistically, if I woke up from a nap and I didn't immediately see the time, no idea. Yeah. Yeah. You got those freak out moments where like, okay, I remember when I was a kid, mm-hmm. uh, and I say kid, but like teenager in high school, I would, you know, say, take a nap after school or, or whatever uh, extracurricular activity I had that day, mm-hmm. you know, crash for a little bit, and then, you know, wake up around dinner time. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. But but look at the clock and go, 6 a.m.? Right. Have you ever felt that? Oh, yeah. Where you're like... 12 hours ahead of yourself. Yes. Yeah, I've totally had (laughs) that. That's the worst. I remember that happened to me once when I was really sick. Like, I had the flu and was puking all day sick. Uh, And I woke up at like 3 a.m. And I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I slept till 3 in the afternoon. (laughs) Yeah. I'm a party animal. (laughs) I'm an animal in bed. (laughs) Uh, If by animal you mean sloth, yes. (laughs) Yeah, pet me and bring me treats. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, like my bed bums. (laughs) Right. Yeah. My my cats lately. So I finally, here's how you know that winter's really approaching. I finally put my electric blanket on my bed. Oh, yeah. And my cats have not left it since. I bet they're loving it. <laughs> oh, they do. Yeah, they get up to pee and poop and eat, <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> and you put your electric blanket on like a fitted sheet. So yeah. it's underneath uh, you. Yeah. So I do yeah. electric blanket, fitted sheet, top sheet, comforter. Spare blankets. What what must they think as animals? Like, <laughs> what's this magical place? They just yeah, and they just they're uh, like, I don't see the sunbeams, but I feel the sunbeams. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Maybe they probably don't think it through that far. Yeah, they're probably just happy just it's like, there. Oh yeah, the warm thing is back now. <laughs> yeah. 